Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hi and welcome everyone and here is the news for today with me, Vanessa. Hospitals in South Jakarta have limited resources to attend all patients COVID-19 after cases soar. An Indonesian doctor, Chera Siarvis, says public hospital in South Jakarta is not ready for the influx of COVID-19 patients after a surge of new infections in the world's fourth most populous country. She adds, the hospital only equipped for basic health care, her facility has had to treat COVID-19 patients, even though it lacks the life-saving ventilators and intensive care units they sometimes required. Meanwhile, the general practitioner says she knew it was getting bad when all the patients classified as suspected coronavirus cases tested positive. Indonesia has reported record daily cases in seven of the last 11 days, with 24,836 new infections and 504 deaths, both new highs, as grappling with the worst outbreak in Southeast Asia. The spike has made it harder to transfer severely ill patients, and city hospitals were at 93% capacity. Hospitals across Java are also nearly full. She is working 12-hour shift, double the normal length after her colleagues were infected despite being fully vaccinated. Indonesian authorities have announced new curb starting including tighter restrictions on movement and air travel, a ban on restaurant dining and closing non-essential offices. Sharos tries to remain positive that still despite the huge strain and concerns, she could be reinfected with COVID-19. Myanmar protesters burn army uniforms in the five months after the coup in the country. Hundreds of protesters took to the streets of Myanmar's biggest city of Yangon, setting fire to an army uniform and chanting calls for democracy five months after a military coup ousted elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi. The protest is one of the biggest in Yangon, although demonstrations against the army take place daily in many parts of the Southeast Asian country. Video obtained by Reuters shows protesters waving lit torches and colorful smoke flares before stopping and setting an army uniform ablaze. <laughs> Myanmar's army has struggled to impose its authority since taking power in the face of the protest strikes that have paralyzed public and private sectors and a resurgence of conflicts in the borderlands. According to the Assistance Association for Political Prisoners, more than 6,400 people have been arrested since the coup, with more than 880 have been killed. Military authorities maintain that the death toll is lower. Indonesia Garuda Airline rolling out free vaccines for passengers at the international airport. Indonesia's state-owned Garuda Airline giving free COVID-19 vaccines for passengers in the capital Soekarno-Hatta International Airport. At least 20 passengers are inoculated with Chinese-made Sinovac vaccines on the first day of the program. According to the airline's director of service, Ade Susardi, there is capacity for up to 200 shots to be administered per day. The data recorded by the Ministry of Health that the free vaccine only applies to domestic travelers who can get their second shot anywhere. Yeah. 
Indonesia has reported record daily COVID-19 infections of more than 20,000 in recent days in a new wave of cases fueled by the emergence of highly transmissible virus variant and increased mobility after the Muslim fasting month, Ramadan. So far, just 13 million Indonesians have received two vaccine shots and more than 181.5 million are said to be vaccinated by January 2022. Forty-seven personnel killed and 49 others injured in the plane crash in the Philippines. Military chief Cyrilito Sovehana says at least 47 soldiers were killed and 49 others injured in the Philippine Air Force plane crash. He adds all 96 passengers of the Philippine Air Force plane that crashed, killing 47 people, have been accounted. Meanwhile, the Department of National Defense says three civilians on the ground were also killed and four civilians were injured. According to a military spokesman, Colonel Edgar Arevalo, that the Lockheed C-130 transport aircraft carrying troops bound for counterinsurgency operations overshot the runway after it touched down at the Holo Airport in southern Sulu province. Philippines orders to investigate the incident of the plane crash. Philippine authorities orders an investigation into the crash of an Air Force plane that overshot a runway killing 47 soldiers on board, three civilians on the ground and injuring dozens. In a news conference, military spokesman Major General Edgar Arevalo says all 96 passengers had been accounted and the plane was in very good condition and had 11,000 flying hours remaining before maintenance was due. Official sighted witnesses says some passengers on the Lockheed C-130 jumped three seconds before the plane crashed and burst into flames. The aircraft, carrying recently graduated troops bound for counterinsurgency operations, had been trying to land at Holo Airport in southern Sulu province. Russia supports the ASEAN plane to end the crisis in Myanmar. Yeah. Yes, like President Trump. <laughs> The foreign minister says Russia strongly supports the Southeast Asian diplomatic effort to end the crisis in Myanmar and has conveyed similar messages to the country's military leadership. And uh, in our contacts with... During a visit to Jakarta, Sergei Lavrov says the five points of consensus agreed by the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, the bloc should be the basis for resolving the situation. In a press conference with her Indonesian counterpart, Retno Marsudi, Lavrov says Russia contacts with Myanmar leaders, military leaders, to promote the position of ASEAN, which should be, in our view, considered as a basis for resolving the crisis and bring the situation back to normalcy. Myanmar has been in crisis since the military ousted Aung San Suu Kyi's elected government on February 1st, unleashing nationwide anger that quickly turned into protests and strikes brutally suppressed by security forces. Uh, we promote the position of ASEAN, which should be, in our view, uh, four dead and 24 still missing in a big landslide caused by heavy rains in central Japan. Local authorities say four people died and 24 others are missing due to a massive landslide triggered by heavy rains in central Japan. The disaster occurs at about 10.30 local time in Atami city of Suzuoka prefecture southwest of Tokyo as heavy rainfall swept areas along the Pacific coast in central and eastern Japan. Upon emergency management, major streams of road traffic to the downtown area resumes. The central area of disaster hit neighborhood was still relying on the temporary water supply. Rescue workers are continuing with the search and rescue operation in the mudslide stricken area for victims. According to the local press, behind the massive mudslide in Atami City is likely a man-made factor in addition to the abnormal rainfall, which indicates an inappropriate use of artificial fill-in construction. 
So far, further investigation into the leading cause of the accident is still underway. The Suzuoka government released a list of the missing persons in the disaster with information of names, addresses, genders, open to the public for clues. According to the weather forecast, another continuous rainfall will occur in the stricken region which is expected to pose problems and even threats to follow-up search and rescue efforts. South Korea records over 800 cases and dominated by Delta variant. Official says South Korea's daily count of coronavirus cases has stopped 800, the highest in the nearly six months, due to the new cluster infections and spread of the highly contagious Delta variant. The Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency reports 826 cases, up from 762 the day before and the highest since January 7, when the country was grappling with the third wave of COVID-19. Almost 81% of the 765 locally transmitted cases came from the capital Seoul and its surrounding regions. Prime Minister Kim bo kyum says he was concerned about an increasing number of cases among young people. Meanwhile, young people in downtown Seoul says they are worried about the spread of the Delta variant and hoped to be vaccinated soon. Authorities are particularly concerned about a new outbreak traced to an English-language academy just outside the capital with at least 242 cases including the Delta variant confirmed there. The government says it will relax social distancing measures this month as daily new cases hovered around 500 and the vaccination drive accelerated and authorities in Seoul and surrounding areas decided extended restrictions measures for one week. South Korea will get 700,000 doses of vaccine from Israel after the Delta variant increases in the country. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett says South Korea will receive 700,000 doses of Pfizer-BioNTech coronavirus vaccine from Israel this week in a bid to speed up immunizations after a spike in infections around the capital Seoul. South Korea will give Israel back the same number of shots already on order from Pfizer in September and October. Briefing reporters in Jerusalem, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett says the vaccines were being loaded aboard a plane within hours of the deal's announcement and that South Korean officials will verify their viability. Meanwhile, Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency Director Jong Eun Kyung says the deal will allow South Korea to accelerate its vaccination plans, including providing shots to employees in some sectors that have a high amount of contact with other people. Local authorities will decide who gets the vaccines, but said priority could be given to people such as street cleaners, delivery workers and retail employees. South Korean authorities say they were hoping to achieve herd immunity earlier than the current November target by inoculating at least 70% of the population with a minimum of one vaccine dose, mostly mRNA vaccines such as Pfizer's. South Korea has been battling a persistent small outbreak, prompting officials to delay some easing of social distancing rules. Overseas tourists are free to roam without quarantine on the Phuket Island. Overseas tourists on Thailand's island of Phuket are able to roam free without quarantine for the first time in more than a year as Thailand launched a special program for vaccinated visitors to the island. Tourists swim in hotel pools and walk along Phuket's postcard perfect beaches after receiving a COVID-19 test results within 24 hours of arrival. The Phuket Sandbox initiative allows free movement on the island for fully vaccinated tourists with no quarantine required, although masks are required in most public places. Local street vendor says, while five-year star hotels and restaurants welcomed back tourists, they were not benefiting from the plan because tourists visit frequently mostly large hotels. Thailand lost about $50 billion in tourism revenue last year when foreign arrivals plunged 83%.
Millions of people visited Phuket every year before the pandemic, and the government and tourism industry hope their reopening will help save its battered economy. And that's all the news for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a lovely day.